Good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Tesh Prakash. Uh, myself and Subhajit Roy are team lead and architect in IBM Spectrum Virtualized team. Uh, we help uh, in development of uh, Ethernet SAN connectivity features for Spectrum Virtualized products like SCSI command over a traditional TCP IP, which is invariably called iSCSI or uh, SCSI command over some special uh, hardware feature like RDMA, that is ICER. Uh, today, uh, we are going to talk about uh, uh, iSCSI infrastructures and its various component. And very importantly, a comparative study between iSCSI offload versus a host stack where iSCSI is completely hosted as a software solution. Right, so on to the next slide. Uh, this slide talks about uh, the agenda which we are going to go through for the next 40 minutes. First, I'll give a very brief overview of um, um, iSCSI. Uh, what are the different layers? Uh, what are the different components involved in iSCSI? Uh, then we will dwell into an architecture differences. What we see uh, uh, the basic difference between uh, iSCSI as a, a software solution and iSCSI on HP. Uh, then we'll go in a little more detail understanding about uh, who is responsible for generating the headers, the packets uh, in case of uh, HBA offload of iSCSI versus the host solutions for the iSCSI. Then very importantly, we're going to talk about uh, the different APIs uh, the both uh, comparative studies offers, for example, what's available uh, as far as the TCP IP in our host is concerned and what's available when we offload either the TCP IP or the complete iSCSI stack uh, over the HP. Once we are done with the API, uh, Subhajit is going to uh, you know, talk about uh, the benefit and the challenges. Uh, what are the uh, concern we see across the three different uh, model. Uh, then what are the design and implementation implications we have and what are the uh, things we need to take care of while uh, implementing uh, the iSCSIs for all both the models. And then uh, last but not the least is the performance statistics. Uh, we're gonna uh, talk about what we see as the performance numbers uh, across the workloads uh, with the different QDF if possible. Uh, then finally, uh, we'll give a pointer to some references and the uh, Q&A. Right, uh, this slide talks about uh, the basics of uh, iSCSI, uh, the different functionality of iSCSI as well as the uh, different component involved in the iSCSI. At a very high level, iSCSI is a block level protocol which encapsulate uh, the SCSI command the IO command or the config command over a traditional TCP IP uh, frame or an interconnect. At a very high or a broad level, if you see, uh, it involves the two main component, uh, SCSI initiator and a target. Initiator is the where application is hosted, uh, which requires access to the backend desks. And SCSI target uh, is hosted where uh, our backend desks are connected. As far as the layering is concerned, uh, they resemble in the initiator and the target. Uh, we have an Ethernet um, as the base uh, interconnect. Uh, then there is our TCP IP, which talks about uh, system informations to connect to each other. Then the iSCSI layer, layer, which is responsible for uh, login and discovery of the uh, disks. And the SCSI layer, where actually the disks I.O. Uh, initiates and fulfills. Uh, now the mechanism of an iSCSI uh, uh, establishment to discover the disks uh, is pretty straightforward. Uh, first, uh, whenever iSCSI wants to initiate a, a discovery, uh, it starts with the TCP IP connect. Uh, connect. Uh, it's uh, called a SYN-SYNAC um, packet transfer. Uh, when the 
uh, iSCSI starts uh, discovery using an iSCSI ADM or any other, any other uh, CLI, first at the TCP IP connection got established, where at the Ethernet layer, first the frames get exchanged, for example, to understand the MAC address. Then at the IP layer, we transfer the packets, uh, for example, understanding what is the IP address of uh, each system. And then at the TCP layer, where we exchange uh, uh, the segments uh, to understand each other's port. For example, iSCSI listen on a specific port. And that's where uh, once the Cincinnati completes or the handshake is complete, iSCSI would start its own packet transfer on that uh, interconnect. Uh, as far as the iSCSI uh, interconnect is concerned, it comprises of three different phases. Uh, first is uh, obviously the, uh, the login phase where it starts with sending a discovery login or a normal login to the other side uh, from the iSCSI initiator to the iSCSI target. And then um, uh, it's, it, it, it concludes with the once the iSCSI uh, login is established between these two systems. Once the logins are established, the disks are discovered by transmitting the config commands at the SCSI level. So once we have an iSCSI session, we start transferring the SCSI command, for example, in query to understand what kind of a disks we have, backend disks we have, and then report lines and then third commands to uh, get this uh, configuration complete. And once we have our iSCSI command running and we discover the learn, we can start an I.O. from an application or any other tools, uh, for example, DD. Uh, and in case of uh, these tools, it will start doing simply an I.O., uh, which could be a read or write uh, with the different block size or the queue depth. Right, uh, this slide uh, going to talk about the architectural differences between the offload versus the host stack solutions. Invariably, uh, uh, this comparison study uh, evolved into a three different model, uh, where we have a one more sub model uh, for this case. Uh, in the first model, uh, we have a SCSI, SCSI implementation completely in the software, where uh, all the component right from the application to the IP layer exist either on the host stack uh, using the functionality of the host stack or in the user space. Uh, NIC is used as a vanilla uh, functionality of just transferring the frame from you know iSCSI initiator to the iSCSI target. It does not add its own headers or any frame just used for transferring the packet from A to B. The second model uh, is basically divided into two different sub -models. The first sub model talk about a TOE, it's called a TCP IP offload engine, where only the TCP and IP layers are hosted on a HBA. But the iSCSI and the SCSI, uh, along with the applications, are completely available on the host or in the user space. It means that when uh, HBA is hosted, uh, the TCP IP the, it is the responsibility of the HPA drivers to provide the APIs for creating the, for example, socket uh, to do a send and receive, uh, which we are going to talk in our API in short while. And the second sub model for this model is where uh, we do something called a PDU offload for an iSCSI which is uh, also called an uh, stateless iSCSI offload, where the complete IO context is not kept in the, uh, in, on the HBA. The, the context has to be kept both on the host side as well as on the HBA side. But the HBA helps in, in a PDU framing uh, in, the, in this particular uh, sub-model. So it uh, the partial of uh, iSCSI could be get uh, is available on the on the HPA as well. So along with obviously the TCP/IP, the Ethernet, and the NIC interfaces also is the responsibility of the HPA in this case. Third and very important model is uh, full offload, where uh, we are not just doing a partial PDU uh, processing in HPA, but 
the complete iSCSI, that means the full IO context exists on an HP. The host tech, uh, which could be a user space or kernel stack, does not know anything about an iSCSI. What we provide from the host perspective is just the buffers, which has data or a command, and the location of that particular buffer. We transfer that to the HP, and HP will take care of transferring that particular packet after adding the iSCSI header, TCP header, IP header, as well as the Ethernet header. Now that's the third model where we are offloading the complete iSCSI to HVM. So when we talk about an offload solution, it could mean a PDU offload or it could mean a full offload. Because uh, in an offload solution, we are not having the liberty to use the host OS functionalities to communicate to the HP. We have to depend upon a thin driver layer written by a vendors. So for example, if we go with a PDU offload functionality of a Chelsea, we still have to use a Chelsea interface or the APIs provided by the Chelsea uh, to communicate with uh, uh, the HP so that we can create the socket, delete the socket, we can communicate over the socket and do a send and receive. And uh, the same is applicable for the full iSCSI upload as well. All right, um, as I mentioned in the agenda slide that we are going to deep a little more uh, inside understanding that what is the responsibility of HBA or the host OS while creating the frames or the packets to transfer from iSCSI initiator to iSCSI uh, target. Now this is a very uh, generic frame uh, which is applicable to all the data transfer uh, happens between the iSCSI initiator and iSCSI target. And we have an Ethernet frame uh, containing the MAC address and some information about an IP layer. The IP header which contains the information about the IP addresses uh, both for the target and the initiator and the TCP header. Uh, which holds the information about the port. That means we are talking about an application called iSCSI and obviously the iSCSI header which gives the information about a uh, lot of data. For example, flow control in the form of a command sequence numbers, uh, how much amount of a data needs to be transferred, for example, a max burst length, uh, etc. And obviously uh, our uh, uh, SCSI header uh, called a CDB contains uh, information about the LUNs, uh, what kind of a uh, command it is. Now, in case uh, if we are using a complete uh, software solution, then it is the responsibility of the host stack to generate all these headers. Uh, it takes care of generating the SCSI header. Uh, it, that means it has to maintain the context, IO context for a particular uh, IO flows, uh, for example, what is the command sequence number, what is the next command sequence number, etc. Uh, the TCP header, it needs to understand that, you know, uh, whatever the frame or data I'm getting from the upper layer, do I need to dissect it depending upon MTU. The IP header, it needs to understand that uh, to what peer I'm talking so that it can uh, create the IP header with the required IP address information and obviously about the MAC uh, or the MAC address as well, uh, which means the software stack is completely responsible for generating all the uh, headers associated with the iSCSI communication. However, in case of an offload stack, uh, we have consider the two model in offload stack. One is the tow model and is another is the uh, PDU offload model. Uh, just the PDU offload. In case of a tow model, it is the responsibility of offload stack to generate the TCP and IP header. Because when the application, either on a host or in user space, generate an iSCSI header, we cannot use the APIs of the host OS, for example, send and receive, or a socket send or a socket receives to transfer the packet, which because it that directly talks to the software TCP IP, but we have to talk to the HBA TCP IP. So for that, we have to hook on to the HBA device driver, 
could be a thin uh, layer where it uh, gives some sort of an interface to transfer the packet. So we just provide the uh, buffers which in, has the SCSI uh, information, analyze SCSI information and send it across using some uh, mechanism, for example, uh, work request mechanisms to the HVA and the HVA will take care of the information which is received from the upper layer and its TCP header, IP header because it will have a context of a connection at the lower layer and send it across to the other side. In case of a full offload, uh, the third model which we are talking about, here one more uh, headers will be added by the HPA, that is an iSCSI. So complete context, IO context is maintained in an, on an HPA. So the HPA is responsible for generating the iSCSI header by uh, having the previous context as well as the information which is received from the upper layer. That means, for example, there's a read command came from the other side. The HPA needs to understand whether I need to send as a status, I need to send as R to T, or I need to send the data, or I need to receive the data. So the complete context is maintained by the HPA in this case. Uh, in this slide, we are going to talk about uh, API difference between the host stack and the offload stack solution. Uh, here, when we are referring the host stack, uh, especially on the operating side, we are mainly referring the Linux. And in offload stack, we are giving a reference to the different APIs provided by the uh, CXGP4 or a Chelsea driver. On a host stack, uh, uh, when we implement uh, the iSCSI solution, uh, there are many kernel helper functions, uh, both for uh, iSCSI. Uh, we're constructing the iSCSI PDU as well as the TCP IP helper functions to communicate the iSCSI package to the TCP layer. Uh, and they are available right across for all the events like send, uh, normal send with the send with zero copy. Uh, for example, if we want to uh, implement a zero copy uh, with the TCP IP, we can use a function or API called kernel send page which picks up the buffer bin provider, uh, adds its own TCP and IP headers, and driver would add the Ethernet header and send it across to the NIC interfaces to uh, transmit to the PA. Uh, similarly, on the receive side, when the sockets indicate that there is some buffers to read, uh, kernel could invoke something called a kernel receive message, and then picks up the buffers uh, where uh, uh, we have all the iSCSI uh, headers to process the packet further. Similarly, on the configuration side, uh, the host OS and the library provides uh, a number of helper functions to create the socket, bind the socket, listen on the server side, and uh, accept on the initiator side. Uh, there are, for example, equivalent of uh, listen in uh, as a kernel listen in uh, Linux operating system. Uh, along with the uh, configuration, uh, there are number of tuning parameters available on a host stack uh, through a number of interfaces like slish, slish or proc. For example, if we want to disable the selective acknowledgements uh, in the implementation, it can be done by simply disabling the SSAC feature uh, uh, for the TCP IP. Uh, another on top of that, if we want to tune up some driver parameters, for example, how many packets it receives through one interrupt, net depth budget, that also can be configured into the, uh, using a sys or a block uh, interface. On the other hand, for offload stack, where the HVA implements either the PDU offload or the just the tow engine, more or less we depend on the HVA specific thin layer and their custom IP to do all the configuration. For example, for send, for receive, as well as for a configuration. So for example, uh, we want to start a listen object uh, because we are acting as a server. Then we have to ultimately use the HBA specific thin layer or the custom API 
for example in Chelsea it's a, a CXGB4 start server and which uh, start a lesson objects and subsequently the similar function or the API would be available for sending the packet just by adding your iSCSI headers or by just adding the SCSI headers as well as for receiving the packet. So ultimately we have to depend upon all the interfaces available uh, made available by the HB eventers. On top of that uh, all the configuration uh, changes for example we assume that there are some uh, issues in the performance and we want to tune up some parameters we have to go to the HV vendors and say that if these parameters can be tuned up to some different value, for example, disabling the selective acknowledgements or maybe uh, decreasing or increasing the net debt budget. Because the whole IO context exists on HV rather than on the host stack. A specific when we are talking about offload stack, we are talking about a Chelsea uh, for both for the toe and a full iSCSI offload and we have to refer uh, their thin layers for example CXGV4i on the iSCSI initiator side for the PDU and the full offload as well as the CXGVT uh, on the target side uh, for both uh, full offload versus the uh, PDU offload. Now if you refer those particular driver you might have seen that uh, these driver already have the APIs defined but they are defined very specific to the standard Linux uh, uh, drivers uh, where for example for the LIO but if you are, if you are implementing our own uh, SCSI or a uh, target implementation those, those interface can be reused but in concurrence with the, the vendor. Um, that's the basic difference between those APIs. Uh, for the next set of uh, slides, I'll hand over the presentation to Subhajit to talk about the benefits uh, between the three models, the challenges, the design challenges, as well as the performance statistics across the three models. Thank you. Thank you, Tej, for the insight into software-based versus offloaded iSCSI stack so far. I will go ahead and add some more details to what you have already presented. Um, in this slide, uh, I'll present some comparison between the key aspects of the three types of iSCSI implementation. They are the full software iSCSI stack, then the iSCSI implementation using TCP offload engine, and full iSCSI offload where the entire iSCSI stack is implemented by the adapter. The first thing to note is performance. Software iSCSI stack can provide good enough performance for applications that are not too transactional or latency hungry in nature. This is primarily due to the extra cost incurred due to the software processing of frames and absence of zero copyright capability in software. Hence, this kind of implementation is suitable for applications that can live with a good throughput and average IOPS. It's not ideal for flash interconnect. Toe offload and full offload iSCSI implementations are bound to be faster in terms of performance compared to a software implementation. They will provide comparatively better latency, IOPS and CPU utilization. There will be some minor or marginal difference between TOW versus full offload, though that wouldn't be too significant for most applications. For latency hungry and IOPS hungry transactional workloads that want to use iSCSI to access all flash storage, an offloaded implementation would be ideal. The second point to note is that software iSCSI stacks have no vendor dependency. They work on standard NIC interface, which is the most common form of Ethernet available in the market and will usually work with the widest range of adapters and operating systems. Offload implementations, on the other hand, are very vendor specific. Hence, there is no standardization about how a iSCSI offload driver and adapter interface with, interface with each other. 
and the drivers are very vendor specific and hence will operate only on the specific type of adapters that it is built for. A software based implementation is obviously going to be the cheapest possible implementation for from the host perspective because major operating systems like Red Hat, VMware, Windows etc. all have native iSCSI initiator drivers built in. And these operate on top of any 10, 25, 50 or 100 gig NIC cards. Full offload, or offload implementations are likely to be more expensive because it will require specific models of adapters and specialized drivers on the host. Toe implementations would fall somewhere in between because a lot of NIC vendors usually have some kinds of offload capabilities that are not as expensive as full offload implementations. When it comes to protocol currency or implementation of latest features of TCP, IP or Ethernet, the software stack provides the greatest control to the author because software stack can implement this capability the quickest. For example, RHEL software stack usually is the fastest to market with any new feature or technology. Offloaded adapters on the other hand will be the slowest to adapt because they are dependent on the adapter firmware to be changed before it can use the new technology. In some scenarios, hardware limitations may not allow the new technologies to be implemented on existing implementations of offloaded adapters altogether. And last but not the least, software implementations are container ready. User space iSCSI implementations are available that have no driver or kernel dependency. This makes them most suitable to the container paradigm where a kernel or hardware component can make portability difficult. Offload implementations would tie them to specific types of hardware causing a portability or container movement issue. Hopefully this gives some idea about the checks and balances that need to be made by the author when deciding to, write, deciding to choose whether they want to implement a software based iSCSI stack, a full offload iSCSI stack or a two offload iSCSI stack. So let's have a look at the design and implementation challenges of host based iSCSI stack implementation versus TO or full offload iSCSI implementation. So in the case of host based or software iSCSI stack implementation, one has to select a kernel based or user spaced implementation of iSCSI. User space implementations are usually proprietary in nature, whereas the open source Linux based kernel implementations of iSCSI stacks are readily available. Now the availability of large number of open source implementations on Linux is a great advantage in the case of software stack implementation because of a lot of references that are available to fit into individual requirements of storage controllers. It's often that open source software serves as a excellent starting point for software stack implementations and then author could decide to mold it according to their own requirements. Tuning a storage or host system to achieve the best performance for a software stack would require significant tuning to the IRQ handling, CPU binding and TCP parameters on the system. And this can be very platform specific and time consuming in nature. This is especially important for storage controllers or target implementations of iSCSI where extracting every bit of performance is key. So this is an area where the author would need to spend a lot of time trying to tune a software based stack to get the best performance possible. On Linux, you actually have zero copy read implementations available which can be used by the iSCSI driver but there aren't any zero copy write implementations available on Linux. 
that makes it difficult to reduce latencies in CPU utilization for write IOs for software implementations. So this is again a consideration while for the, for the software stack developer regarding what kind of workloads would they want to support with a software iSCSI stack. Offload implementations on the other hand, they require very vendor specific implementations and a driver written for one offload implementation will not be portable to another. For full offload implementations, the entire IO context is maintained by the adapter. Unlike for software and tow based implementations where the IO context is maintained by the driver. Offload driver implementations can be simpler to implement because drivers need to adhere to adapter PCI development specs to submit and receive IOs. Usually vendors will provide both interrupt and pole mode operations so that isn't an issue. In general, full offload driver implementations can be written with a major part of the driver implemented in the user space while a small part of the driver can reside in kernel space primarily to allocate DMA memory and allocate to driver queues, primarily to allocate DMA memory and allocate those to driver queues etc. which are then a map to the user space and the rest of the driver is written in user space. So effectively, these two are very different types of implementations. Uh, one requires uh, complete knowledge, a host software stack implementation requires complete knowledge of the iSCSI protocol, whereas uh, writing an offloaded driver uh, doesn't require complete knowledge of the iSCSI stack because a large part of the iSCSI stack is actually hidden inside the adapter. Uh, one really needs to write to the specs of the driver. Besides that, there are different other kinds of challenges that I just pointed out which needs to be keep, kept in mind while selecting what type of driver to write. Finally, let's have a look at a sample set of graphs picked up from the Chelsea website that indicates the performance difference that can be achieved by means of a offload implementation iSCSI stack versus a full software based implementation. These readings were taken from the host perspective where the offload driver was implemented on the server. Target side implementations usually have slightly different dynamics and hence performance for target side implementations may not exactly match those indicated here. The first thing to note is that IOPS performance of offload drivers is much better than software implementations as can be seen by comparing the solid green and orange bars with the dotted green and orange bars for both reads and writes. Primarily focus on the small sized IOs 4K and 8K which are CPU intensive. The other point to note is that throughput or bandwidth numbers for large IOs for software implementations are only marginally worse than the offloaded driver stack numbers. And this is primarily because these large IOs require do not, do not require that much of CPU processing and that is where these numbers even out. So essentially, CPU utilization which is about 20 to 25 percent better for offload implementations helps improve IOP performance because it gives more rooms for, to the CPU to actually execute more number of operations per second. And the last point which is important is that one can see that both the read and write IOPS and bandwidth numbers for offloaded stack are almost the same. This is primarily because a zero copy write is possible on the offloaded stack whereas a zero copy write is not possible on a software stack and only zero copy read is possible which is why you would see that read bandwidth for software implementations is better comparatively than write bandwidths for the same IO size. So these are some references to read more about iSCSI software versus TOW and offload implementations. 
Some of them can help in deeper understanding on this subject and will help both initiator and target driver writers. So please have a look as needed. Thank you for joining this session. We appreciate your time and attention. Please take a moment to rate this session because your feedback will help us improve in the future. Thank you for listening.